today's episode, we're going to show you how to do a footer in the brand new Divi 4.0 builder. All right, so we're here. We've got a brand new installation of Divi. We're working on the latest version. I believe it's 4.0.3, uh, latest version of WordPress, and pretty basic. I mean, we've got nothing really installed. Uh, I'll even show you. We've got nothing really to conflict with, uh, with Divi. I've got a post duplicator and the WPMU dev dashboard with all of the plugins are deactivated. So we wanted to show you basically how to set up a footer, a global footer, very simply using um, using the new Divi 4.0 theme builder features. So we've got just a basic customization already on here from the customizer, but nothing really in depth, nothing super special. So the first thing you want to do, go into the dashboard, hover over Divi, and then go to Divi theme builder. They've done an amazing, amazing job. You can drop a global header, global footer, and it'll copy over to everything you do. The targeting here is, is really next level. And I'll show you real briefly. If you add a new template, you can target by pages, by posts, by archive pages, even down to 404 and search results, or you can go to specific pages, which is really, it's pretty awesome. I think the page builder, or the theme builder rather, was 100% worth it. What Divi's done here, what Elegant Themes has done here is just really above and beyond. It really blew my expectations out of the water. So when you click on one of these, we're going to add a global footer. You can add from library. So I know that after the release of Divi 4.0, Elegant Themes has put out a handful of different themes or some packs that work with the theme builder, some headers, some footers, some templates in the page, um, a lot of things to help support the community, which is amazing. You So you can download them and add them from the library, or you can just build a global footer from scratch. And when you do the build a global footer, it's just gonna take you into the front end builder or the visual builder and allow you to create what's going to work on every single page. It'll automatically inject it into every page as long as you're using the non-blank template on your page itself. So we've got this thing loading up, and again, it gives you the option, pre-made, clone existing page, or build from scratch. We're going to do the build from scratch option and just start with a completely blank slate. And uh, one thing I'm going to do is just do multiple columns, just do a generic footer, very, uh, very standard footer, right? We're going to do an image here, and we'll just load up our logo. We already have a few of them in here, so... Why not? We'll put the white logo here. We'll change the section background. We'll make it black so you can see the logo. And then we'll come over here and do some text. All right. So right above that, we'll do a little, a little header and say explore. We'll change our text options here, make everything white, and then our header, put the H2 white. Let's say we just make it a little bold so it stands out. And actually while we're in here, let's take this text, and just change it up a little bit. All right, so now we've got this here, and we'll just duplicate it, drop it over. Duplicate this and drop it over. Now we've got basically an essential, just the pieces of a of a footer. I'm going to go ahead and create just a little border down here at the bottom, and then we'll go ahead and we'll add another row. We could do a full menu here. I don't know which menus I have on this. Probably not much. Just the main menu works. We'll do it centered, so it'll show up here centered. We can change some of these features. Go ahead and make the background transparent, and we'll change the menu text. So we can go to white, menu. We can go, let's see, make it light here. We could change the font size if we wanted. We can change the color as well. Could blend in just a little bit more. Oh, not sure where it went there, but let's uh, let's go back into the design menu text. Got it light. 
that's what it is. So we'll just leave it like that. I've got this, it's good to go. And if we wanted, we could add, we don't have to add another row, but we could add um, just some text below this, right? Not an accordion. <laughs> Let's do text. And we'll go back into the front end visual editor. And we'll say uh, designed by the linear media. We'll center align this text. And then we can work on spacing if we needed to as well. So we'll go with zero up top on the padding, zero up on the margin. And then we could do the same thing here with the menu. I'll go to the spacing, make sure everything is tight. And then here, you know, if we needed to add in actual menus, we could change this up so we can put, so actually explore would work just fine. We could take this, get rid of that text. And we can get a little creative with this and create a new item. And let's say it's blog, add a link to it. And we can go in and change the actual link text. So instead of it being fully white, again, we could go a little bit down, gray it out and change the hover effect to be full on bright. So we also here would need to change up the spacing because I don't like the gap. We need to shrink that down. And we need to adjust this one here as well. Make sure that there's no margin or padding at the bottom. So if we do a zero margin, it puts everything pretty much in line. Then we can just duplicate. Now before we duplicate, let's make sure the spacing is right. So we had adjusted, let's say, let's see what this looks like and we'll duplicate. That's actually not too bad. So we can duplicate this a few more times and then we could go here and actually we'll use the, some of the advanced column features. So let's delete this fourth feet, uh, column and we'll add one back in. So here we'll go and change explore to social. And then we're left where we can go in and change these individual links. So we could change this one. We can make this Instagram and we could link up the Instagram account. We can go under here and change all of these. You know. So we'll do Facebook. And let's just say for now, we'll keep this uh, a little simple, but we got Facebook and Instagram and explore. We'll do blog and let's say maybe we change this one to a uh, podcast. We'll go ahead and clean up these other ones as well. So now we've got what is essentially just a, a very basic uh, footer. We'll go ahead and just look at a little bit of the spacing here at the bottom. And if we make it zero, it tightens things up a little, a little too much. So we'll add a little bit more of a gap here and we'll hit save. So this is our footer. It's a very basic footer, but it is our footer. So this will go ahead and save. And once it's saved this layout, we'll be able to close out of here and we'll be, it'll take us back to the theme builder. So now we've got this global footer and you'll see it's not going to show up just yet.
All right. So it won't show up on the front end just yet because we haven't saved the theme builder. So when we go to the bottom, we're still seeing the normal Divi footer that comes with it. When we hit save changes, it's going to go ahead and update that. And we'll refresh this page and you will see now our footer is here. So if we were to go to any of the other pages we built on this test site, um, blog's not one of them, about's not one of them. Okay, so this is a very basic site that I built out here. I forget the things that I put on here, but we can go into one of the test blog posts, go to the bottom and see our footer is still there. And so these links can be customized however you want to do them. Um, they work 100% with um, with the theme builder if you'd use a blank template it'll keep those pages blank but as long as you have the regular template for a page or a post um, this will work and actually let me take you into one of the pages i'll show you exactly what i mean by that in case you're not as familiar with divi as some others may be out there so when we go into say this course landing page this page should be, well, it's not a full page, so it does have all of this, but it is a landing page example that we've built up. So you see the header and the footer there. And when we go into the back end to actually edit the page, well, over here on the side, we're gonna see some of the page options. So we'll shrink this stuff up. And here under page attributes, there's a default template and there's a blank page. If you do the blank page, it's going to remove that menu at top and remove the footer. So long as you leave things here on the default template, you'll be able to see the footers and the headers that you set inside of this Divi theme builder. But the key thing to remember is that when you go under and set a new version of this, so if we were to add a template, it's going to automatically put that footer on it. And we can create, you know, say all all posts. When we create this, it's going to automatically copy over our copy over our global footer, and then we can add a custom body. And what that would do is allow us to build a framework for, in this case, what we've targeted is all posts. So every blog post that we have could fit into this framework. And and Divi, Divi gives you a really cool uh, post content option. So anything that gets posted into Gutenberg or into the, the old default uh, WYSIWYG editor for WordPress, that content will drop into that, that module placeholder and you could build a design all around it. So I'm a huge fan of this theme builder. I think Elegant Themes has done a bang up job. Um, I hope that you really enjoy this. I'm going to package up this footer and I'm going to add it into uh, the layout memberships we have over at keyhillinearmedia.com. If you're interested in this, jump over to the site. It's five bucks a month, or you can do a lifetime subscription for $99. You will be able to get um, all the layouts that we bring to you, including things like this for the theme builder where we're doing headers, footers, different page sections, just a ton of different things that we're doing. Um, there's already a ton of, of layouts for individual modules and things like that over in the membership. So you can go over to the site, check them out. Uh, let us know your feedback. We'd love to see it. So we hope that you've enjoyed this. I hope that it's really shown you a few things of what you can do with the theme builder. Or if you haven't updated Divi to 4.0, maybe some of this is jogging some ideas or helping you think about what you can do to your site if you do upgrade. I will throw a big caveat out there. If you're thinking about upgrading, make sure you do your backups. Make sure you take your site off into a staging area before you go all in and do this update. Thankfully, Divi does give you the rollback feature, and I have tried it in a few live environments where I've updated and rolled back below from four to three with no problems at all. But I would suggest taking this thing off of your live production site, putting it on a staging area, or even get local by flywheel, copy your site over, and uh, do your testing there. That way you don't mess anything up in your live environment. So have a great day. Play around with this. Let us know in the comments. Uh, some of the things that you're doing with it, link up any projects that you're doing with the Divi Theme Builder. We'd love to check them out. Um, have an awesome week and we'll see you in the next video.